And hey, it's uh, Doug Cunnington here from the Insight Project again. We're doing um, another one of these um, coaching sessions with Rob. So Rob, how's it going this evening? Great, Doug, thanks for having me again. You're welcome. Um, let's see, so last time, I think we left off, we we're gonna take a look at the the task list that you were um, you know, sort of thinking about for your entire uh, niche site process. So, you know, in project management, you can make it super complicated, especially if you're looking at it from a corporate level or, you know, some, some something that you're looking at from like PMI, for example. However, in many cases, for things that you and I are trying to do, you could kind of just like list out all the tasks, divide it into phases, and you'll find that you have a much greater understanding of what you're trying to do and what you need to do on a daily basis. So I think the quote that you had before uh, was something like, when you sit down to your laptop, what are you going to work on? So right. um, what we did was uh, sort of went through a process of listing everything out. Now, I gave you a head start, Rob, and sent you over a task list of what I had available already. And then you adapted to it. We'll take a look at that in a second. But how did that process go? Um, and what were your impressions uh, when you first got the list? And then after you finish um, editing your process? Uh, so when I got the list, it was kind of overwhelming that there's that many steps that go into the niche process. Uh, so it was really, really nice to have it all down. Uh, for the most part, uh, the list was pretty much the same. There were just minor differences in the way keyword research was done uh, and some little other things. But uh, overall, it was just nice to see it all in one thing and also makes me feel good that it, it doesn't just happen overnight because I'm always thinking, why am I not building this faster? But there's a reason why. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I had the same feeling as well. So I believe, Rob, can you see my uh, screen that I'm displaying the, the task list? Yep. Okay, and that hopefully that indicates that everyone else can too. And what I'll do is I'll put a link below the video um, so that you, anyone, can go ahead and download this list. It's on uh, Google Documents. And I'll share the original one uh, where Rob hasn't edited it with his questions or notes. And then you can make your own copy and do whatever you want with it. So um, there are something like um, 64 uh, different tasks or phases in here and each one actually breaks out into many more phases but um or many more steps so we'll just kind of look at a high level at each one of the main phases that i divided it into we'll look at the questions that rob had and make sure that you know they're answered and if there's any sort of adaptations that we want to make here we can do that so i will uh, unless you want to rob i will go through the main phases and just sort of, you know, mention a sentence or two about them. So if you want to do it, you, you can. Yeah, I just started off. And then uh, I guess in this first area, I do have a couple of questions. So, okay. Um, Sounds good. All right. So planning, of course, um, in the project management area, you could probably imagine I try to put a lot of my focus at the planning at the beginning so that um, you really have a good idea of what you're aiming towards at the end. Now, that's not to say that the plan's so rigid you can't adjust. In fact, if you don't adjust, you're probably doing something wrong and you need to you know, <laughs> look at what you're doing a little bit more closely. But um, the, the point is here, you think about your, your end goal and then you back into it. Um, and, and that way you're really kind of looking at it holistically. So um, Rob, you had a couple questions here. Uh, I'll let you read them out. Yeah, so before I ask one of the questions, one of the challenges I've had with, uh, you know, planning and going through lists like this is, you know, let's just take the first one, right? So um, decide if you'll do keyword, keyword research partially or completely. Like, will I write it or will I outsource it? Um, when you make a decision like this, um, I guess, does it get recorded somewhere or you just, I mean, that one you kind of just know, hey, I'll have to outsource, but just sort of like what triggers go off when these decisions are made, do you keep notes anywhere or where do you refer back to this information? Gotcha. Um, 
That's a good question. I think me personally, in many cases, I had a pretty good idea that I was going to do a blend of each one of those. If we're talking specifically about a niche site, which mm-hmm. we are, so I'll answer it that way. So I knew I was going to do a blend and there would be certain points in time where I would have things outsourced versus not. So, and, and we'll just look at that outsourcing portion. So for example, like the content, I knew that I was going to have all of it written, um, or at least all of it up to a point written. So I knew I was going to have, say, five articles written by someone, and then I was going to write like blog posts, for example, after that. So obviously that, that one's pretty clear. Five posts that I'm going to outsource, yeah. and then I pick up the others now. Um, do you have another example where maybe it's not so cut and dry? Yeah, maybe uh, the, the link building. Okay. So in, in that case, I would probably, um, t- and to go back and actually answer your question, Rob, I realize I'm kind of dancing around. So I would create a separate tab in a spreadsheet that had like mm-hmm. link building is the title of the tab. And then I would like outline each one of the um, phases that we had, which, you know, there's actually, a, I think, a link building phase down here, right? So here's sure, a bunch yeah. of stuff about link building. And then I would document it pretty clearly. Um, you know, I mentioned before, each one of these steps prob- probably breaks out into many sub steps or sub tasks. And then you can assign an owner there. And what you're really what you're getting to is, you know, the owner of the task, like when you're going to start it. And if there's like some trigger to, to start that task. And you should probably have a pretty darn good idea of like when you're going to finish too, because if something's dependent on that one finishing, it tells you when to start the next one. And um, so anyway, I would sort of, and and really that's the essence of like a project plan that what you're going to do, when you're going to do it and who's going to do it. And then any dependencies, like if you just have those four or five things, that's pretty much all you need in going through the exercise of this, listing out the task, knowing when you're going to do them even if you don't follow the plan, like you will have thought about it more than if you just, if you're at the supermarket or if you're at dinner and you're like, oh yeah, I need to do that uh, like extra PBN post, but I need someone to write it. And then gosh, well, where should I have it linked to? And you should really plan all that stuff ahead of time so that you're not, you know, making those decisions um, as you think of it when you're not like intentionally, uh, when you're not intentionally focusing on work if I said that right. Is that helpful at all? Yeah, and it's, it makes me think about specifically getting to the PBN process and it just sounds like, yeah, I gotta do a lot more planning up front. Okay, yeah, you know, I, I definitely um, bump into some people that think that they they don't wanna plan too much because they wanna have the flexibility to, um, you know, do what do whatever they they feel like doing, kind of. Um, whatever mm-hmm. happens to be going on in their life, they want to be able to have that flexibility. And you can be as rigid as you want in in the process, or you, as flexible as you want. And the thing is, if you if you don't think it through all the way, you'll always be catching up, and you'll really never feel like you have control of what you're doing. And you'll never really feel satisfied that you're like productive because you're always chasing what you just thought of that makes sense yeah and i and i feel those two things that you said on a daily basis so hey i do too i can tell i can tell people about it but it (laughs) it's still a struggle to like follow it myself so um yeah even if you try to be really organized it just it sometimes feels out of control and then my list of stuff there's you know 65 things on here 64 like it's like you'll never catch up. But if you break it down and you're like, wow, I actually got X done really well, then you can move on. You feel satisfied about your life and productivity. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, you're checking things off, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so you had you had a couple questions here also. Are they further down on the page here? Oh, um, let's see. There was one on... 
B2, what happens from a PM point of view when they ch the answers are different? How do you prepare after? Is that exactly what I just answered? Yeah, they were pretty much the same question, just asked two different ways, and yeah, you answered them. Got it. Okay. And uh, this next one I see here is list which plugins are important. So um, that's obviously yeah, that's, just, that's just alluding to the fact that some of these, like you said earlier, have more steps than they're just what was listed. So I, I was having a little bit of trouble trying to, to decide what deserved just to be on this list and what and how far to take it, so to speak. Gotcha. So um, you could totally put everything on this one particular page if you wanted to. Um, in fact, uh, I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Microsoft Project, but you know, a lot of stuff that I've done at work did have it uh, or did use uh, Microsoft Project. And essentially, it's just a big spreadsheet with like some particular uh, relationships between cells. I mean, really, that's all it is. So um, the point being, you could list out the whole entire project. I mean, even if you put all the steps in here, it would still be under probably three or 400, right? Even if you listed every plugin that you may have and any like sub tasks that you have to do, let's say you have to like buy a plugin, make sure you put in the registry or registration code and blah, blah, blah. Um, you could put all that here if you wanted to, along with the dates and the owners, no problem at all. So do, do you, that kind of leads to a different type of question. Do you ever um, say you built a list like this? How would you, uh, uh, link out or connect that to maybe a set of instructions that lives somewhere else, maybe in a different, on a different document or somewhere else? Um, I would probably have uh, the columns that I described before, and then I would have um, just another column that was instructions and just hyperlink it there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. I probably wouldn't put instructions in the sheet. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, I think that covers it pretty much. Um, and I'm just gonna click back. We did have a couple of talking points. So uh, we talked about the list uh, as a whole. We talked about um, your, your major phases that you had in there. Um, so one thing that we talked about before and that we wanted to highlight is you know where your uh, niche sites are in various phases so um, can you tell us how many sites you have at least that we're considering for this process and then where they're at in the grand scheme of things sure so for this process i have six um, i'm just going to call them one through six. So site one and two actually just got hired. Uh, I outsource my blog commenting. Okay. And that just got done uh, yesterday. Site number three uh, is cracking the top 10 for a pretty big search uh, with a couple of PBNs. So right now uh, I'm trying to focus on expanding the PBN links and scheduling those. Site number four uh, needs a little bit more content. It has a decent amount, but I want to make it a little deeper and then transition into commenting and PBNs. So it's kind of in the content stage, if you will. Uh, site number five uh, just has been kind of sitting there. I need to decide if it needs, if it wants to be part of the mix. So it would need comments. Uh, then to give the end stage and site number six is brand new. I have about two thirds of the content and I'm just, I just need to put the, uh, the review pages. I haven't done any of those. And that's, yeah, those are the six right now. Okay, cool. And well, and it sounds like you, you have a pretty good understanding where they are in the phases too. So that was one of the major goals is just kind of have an idea, um, of where they were at. Right. Yeah, and actually I took, you know, kind of what we've been working on uh, and, and with that list and sort of in my head just 
well, actually, I wrote it down, but I know, you know, kind of where they are and what needs to happen next. And it's been, it's been pretty helpful just seeing it to start with. Okay. And um, so, and I'm just curious from like, let me, let me think the right way to ask. So before you, you, whenever you thought about one of the individual pride projects and these niche sites, you knew, Hey, it's kind of in this phase, right? So it's not like you, you learned anything new, but now you have a better understanding of how everything fits together because you listed everything out and then mapped it over. Right. Yep. Okay. And like, I guess, do you feel like things are more under control now just by knowing that? A lot more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was ridiculously simple to just like, I mean, it's just moving your thoughts on paper, right? Or... It took 20 minutes tops. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's crazy. Whenever I end up, cause I, like I said, I'm no different than anyone else. So I end up feeling overwhelmed. I'm not sure really quite like where everything is. I'm like, man, I, I don't know how I'm going to outsource like this, you know, research or whatever that I need done. And then I'm dreading like writing out the steps. It turns out there's like six steps. The person's qualified to do it. All I have to do is write it down, send them an email and they're on it. And that, I literally did that yesterday. I was dreading okay. it for a couple yeah. of weeks and it was really like a matter of, you know, 10 minute investment of time that I had to do. So Okay. Yeah, I feel, I feel that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So it sounds like um, we probably want to dive into a particular area, and I think based on, I guess, understanding where the most amount of work that you have, that sort of content and understanding the content phase. So, um, which site will we be looking at? Uh, is it number four? For the content no actually number six so okay. even though it's along in the process uh, i thought this was going to be a good one because we've got the review pages to do so this one's kind of following i mean review templates are going to be something that i can use for websites consistently each time so okay so what's like the biggest um i guess the biggest challenge around the content and why you want to look at this particular area next time the, because every time I do content it's it's a different process um, just not knowing sort of how much you know I need to t like kind of guide them like how much they know uh, and also you know I'm sort of creating the the templates for these reviews every single time so like product intro and like things, pros and cons, like that changes for me site to site. And I'd like to get to a spot where that could, you know, kind of be, find a template that, that I like and just know that that's how the writers are going to work from it. Okay. Got it. And that makes sense. I mean, the correspondence that you may have with a writer, it could be a lot. There's a lot of back and forth, especially if it's, I mean, let's hope that your, your contractors, are willing to take feedback, but yeah, when you consider that and you want to make sure that you're removing yourself from some of the process, when you look back at your ultimate goal to have a lot of this stuff outsourced, it'll be really important to, you know, have a template that you could send them for, you know, generally whatever you need. Plus if you have, um, you know, these different types of content that you need on the sites, there's no reason to recreate the wheel. I mean, how many types of content do you really need? You could probably, you know, summarize it into a handful, less than 10 or a dozen. So, yeah, and I, I might add, there are a, a few uh, articles other than review that uh, I could add to this process. I was thinking about just keeping it in house, finishing it, but I guess it'd be worth addressing how you would go about taking an article that just doesn't really fit into a mold. It's kind of unique. Um, and maybe what, what goes into that, you just have to create a new template or I'm curious to see how you would deal with that. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, we'll talk about that next time. Um, do you have any final questions or comments about 
the task list or anything that we discussed? I, I think I'm pretty good. Okay, cool. Well, we'll uh, dive into the content and then uh, we'll talk again next time. Thanks, Rob. See you. See you, Doug.